I'm Jason Epperson, this is RV Miles, and it's time for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. This episode is sponsored by the Togo RV app, offering checklists, maintenance reminders, and more. The app is free, but a $39 per year Togo RV Plus membership gives you RV-specific route navigation, the R Village social network, overnightrvparking.com, and Road Trippers Plus, along with a host of discounts on RV products like tires and lithium batteries. You can get $10 off Togo RV Plus with the code RVMILES10X. Well, motorhome values dropped 7% between July and August on the wholesale market, according to analysts at BlackBook. That's the first dip in motorhome values since February. But towables increased in value in August by under 1%, the smallest gain since last November. But if you think that means the market for RVs is starting to loosen up, take a look at Thor Industries' fiscal year end earnings report released on Tuesday a record $12.3 billion in sales and over 300,000 units sold. Back in December, Thor had a $9 billion backlog of orders yet to be built. And one would think if sales were dying down, they'd have hacked away at that a bit. Nope. The current backlog for the world's biggest RV manufacturer has almost doubled in 10 months to about $17 billion. People are buying more and more RVs in 2021. The industry generally ships around 500,000 units and expects to ship over 575,000 next year in 2022. On Monday, Boondockers Welcome will be launching a new website that will be the first step towards integration with Harvest Host since being purchased by them back in June. The new website will allow members to search across both Boondockers Welcome locations and Harvest Host locations at the same time. The new site will also feature search by route functionality, customizable trip boards, redesigned member and host profiles, and integrated sign-on for folks with both memberships. Jayco, long a maker of all types of RVs except Class Bs, recently entered the camper van market with the Swift, which features two floor plans on a Ram Promaster chassis, a rear bath with dual twin beds, and a rear kitchen model with a fold-out sofa bed and four captain's chairs. But now Jayco is upping the game with their first 4x4 camper van, the Terrain. The $192,000 van is built on a Mercedes Sprinter chassis and features a drop-down bed in the rear to allow for lots of gear space in the 20-foot cabin. There's a bathroom with a shower and a cassette toilet and a kitchenette with a sink, fridge, and induction stove, and a couple pull-out tables that can be expanded to create a dining space or a lounge. Underneath, there's upgraded shocks and a rear sway bar for off-road comfort. A roof rack and a built-in air compressor come standard. The Terrain is fitted with a 48-volt, 210-amp-hour lithium battery, plus 200 watts of solar panels on the roof. And the thing that turned my head, a 48-volt DC air conditioner. We've mentioned a few times recently that there's a new RV company on the block, Ember, and now we've had a look at their off-road adventure trailers. Embers are built on heavy-duty tubular steel frames and feature coil springs and dual shock absorbers on each wheel. The walls, roof, bed, and bunks are framed in aluminum, and the windows are dual-pane acrylic. There's a smart control system, 190 watts of solar, more propane, water, and holding tank capacity than a typical RV of this size, an integrated parking brake, and way more goodies than I can mention here. Check them out at emberrv.com. AAA has issued a grim reminder, move over or slow down for emergency vehicles, including tow trucks. Recent deaths of two AAA tow providers killed while assisting motorists highlight just how dangerous it is for individuals who regularly work along the shoulders of America's busy and congested roads. Glenn Ewing, 32, was killed July 4th near Cincinnati, Ohio, while placing a disabled vehicle on the back of a flatbed on the side of the road. He leaves behind a fiance and two children. Only three weeks later, 30-year-old David Meyer was assisting a driver on the left-hand shoulder in Castle Rock, Colorado, when he was also struck and killed. As of August this year, 14 tow providers have been killed while helping others at the roadside in 2021. The AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety found that among drivers who do not comply with move-over laws at all times, 42% thought this behavior was somewhat or not dangerous at all to roadside emergency workers. 
To protect these individuals, AAA and other traffic safety advocates have led the way in getting move over laws passed in all 50 states and the District of Columbia. Yet they find that nearly a quarter of people are unaware of the move over law in the state where they live. And it's not just tow providers and other emergency responders being killed on the side of the road. Since 2015, over 1,600 motorists have been struck and killed while outside of a disabled vehicle. The reality is that drivers are increasingly distracted while driving. Previous AAA Foundation research has found that drivers are up to four times as likely to crash if they're talking on a cell phone while driving and up to eight times as likely to be in a crash if they're texting. If you see something, anything on the shoulder ahead, slow down and move over. It could literally save someone's life. Recently, our friends over at RVTravel.com released an article about the state of new RVs in the RV industry, and several of you have written in to ask me to comment on it. The article is titled Pathetic Quality. RV dealers are fed up with what manufacturers are producing. An RV travel reporter was given the opportunity to listen in on a nationwide conference call between dealers in which one dealer was quoted as saying, it's some of the worst stuff I've seen in 30 years. It's horrendous inside and out, but we have no recourse but to put it on the lot and try to sell it. You take what you can get and you move on. The dealer went on to say manufacturers are building them as fast as they can and there just isn't any quality control. Manufacturers are not doing a good job of taking care of their customers and it's gone from bad to worse. Now, the article went a bit viral and was quoted by a handful of other major websites. And while it's very clear that the RV industry has quality control problems and has for years, I do wish the article went a bit further and followed up with some on the record conversations. I feel that it's important not to paint every manufacturer with the same brush. Yes, there are only a handful of big parent companies, but having done factory tours during this crazy busy time for RV sales and having spoken with dozens of dealers, I can tell you that yes, over the course of the last year and a half, some manufacturers have been cranking RVs out at a breakneck speed and have let quality control slip even further. But I can also tell you that many manufacturers have responded in different ways. Some have not increased production at all. They only have the capacity to produce so many units and don't have new labor, facilities, or parts to build more faster. It's just impossible for them to do so. Some have streamlined their process. Take Sabre, for instance. Full disclosure, we're brand ambassadors for Sabre. But in order to go from 16 units today to 18 units a day, Sabre streamlined their processes, making everything standard. There are no additional packages. There are no dinette or table options or refrigerator options. They make five floor plans and they make them well. Some manufacturers have actually dramatically stepped up their quality control, building multi-million dollar facilities recently to handle the process. But others are trying to keep their output high and prices low by cutting corners. Now, some dealers are perfectly happy to carry any brand. Other dealers will cut their orders if a manufacturer's product has become a headache for them and go to someone else. The bottom line is each unit is unique and has been for decades. They need to be judged on their own. Now, I'm not here to defend the RV industry because the problem definitely needs to be addressed, but it's much more nuanced than one anonymous quote from one dealer that's gone viral. Have any unit you buy, new or used, professionally inspected by a third party buy from a brand with a reputation for standing by their warranty, and buy from a dealer that actually has the capacity and desire to service units. That's it for this week's news. Let us know in the comments if you've bought an RV recently and what your impression of the quality has been. Make sure to hit the like button for the algorithm and subscribe to show your support. Here's last week's news video if you missed it, and here's a great video that you haven't checked out yet. We'll see you next time. 